The Digger Twins by Emily Joyce Hello again and welcome on board the counting ship. I hope you're enjoying all of the adventures with the counting ship and don't forget if you have any requests then please subscribe to the channel and let me know the kinds of story you'd like to hear. Today I'm meeting up with my friends Gina and Dina, the Digger Twins. Now these twins have a special request and they're here to tell us all about it. So snuggle down and we'll all set sail together. Right, okay, Gina, I was gonna tell them. Well, all right, Dina, don't get your rulers in a twist. You see, the thing is, guys, we hear that you help all sorts of people. Well, we're not exactly people. Obviously not, we're a pair of blooming diggers, Dina. That's what I was trying to say if you let me get my words out. We're a pair of hard-working, fun-loving diggers. And we're twins, see? Indeed you are. I'm not sure I would have been able to tell you apart. You're both such a lovely yellow colour, and you both have the same rollers for moving around on the ground, and you each have a long arm with a bucket for scooping things up. Well, actually, I've got a slightly bigger bucket, but it's only our mum who can tell us apart. Nobody cares about your bigger bucket, Gina. Anyway, we work primarily in construction, building schools and hospitals and things like that. But right now, there's nobody who wants to take us both together. But we always work 100% together, don't we, Dina? Yeah, we do, Gina. We ain't going to be separated for nothing. No, Dina, we are not. So, Emily... We was wondering if you could help us find a job that do for both of us, wouldn't we, Dina? That's right, Gina. We want a job together. Do you reckon you and your friend can help us, Emily? We can certainly try, Dina. What do you think? Shall we help them? Okay. Let's try asking the Sandmen. The Sandmen live in sand castles. Beautiful grand palaces made of sand and they have all sorts of sand houses and sand sculptures they must be building things all the time perhaps they'd like a pair of hard working diggers they live next to the river just where it weaves through the desert I'll steer the ship in their direction oh I'm excited Let's give it a try. So we're sailing slowly down the river now, through the lush green trees of the jungle that grows over the river, keeping us in a cool shade. But the trees start to thin out as we emerge into the desert. And at first we see a few small bucket-sized sand castles. But as we meander deeper and deeper into the sand city, they start to get bigger and bigger. And we begin to see the first sand castles that look like little houses with inbuilt windows and little garden moats all around the house. And they get bigger and grander as we sail through, with jewels embedded into their turrets and seaweed banners hanging between the towers until we finally arrive at the most exquisite building of all, the enormous sand palace. Let's get off here. After you, Gina, and after you, Dina, Oh, well, now, oh, this sand's quite soft for our rollers, Dina. Oops. Gina, watch where you're going. You've knocked over that lovely sculpture of a tiger. Here, I'll scoop it. <gasps> Oops. Look, you've knocked over a bus stop, Dina. Oh, dear, Emily. These streets are all quite narrow, and we're a bit clumsy on this sand. Oh, dear. Perhaps this was a bad idea. 
Here comes one of the Sandmen. Oh, uh, hello, young people. Can I uh, help you at all? Oh, I'm sorry about your sand tiger there, sir. And the sand bus station. Um, and the sand post box. Did you hear post box? I think it's under the bus station. Oh, Mr. Sandman, I'm so sorry. This is my fault. The Digger Twins are looking for a job. And I brought them here. Because I thought you might like some help with your building. But I'm not sure Gina and Dina are built to move on this soft sand. Oh, I see. Well, thank you very much for the kind thought. But I'm afraid the sand castles you see here need a rather delicate hand. Yes, we see that now. But I can tell you who has a slightly larger requirement. Yes. The cloud farmers. The cloud farmers? Yes, of course. Once they've grown their clouds, they have to move them all over the world. They have terrible bother getting them from place to place. I've never heard of cloud farmers before. Well, where did you think all the clouds came from? They're grown on the cloud farm, of course. That's a great idea. What do you think, Gina and Dina? Oh, that sounds perfect. Oh, just think, Dina. No more mucking about with mud and grit. Oh, Gina, you're right. And I'll bet they're nice and light to carry about. We don't have to break our arms picking up bricks anymore. But how do we get there? Take the lift, of course. The sandmen grind the clouds into a fine powder to add to our special sleep sand. So we've had a lift to the cloud farm for years. And the sandman takes a small metal disc out of his pocket and it hovers before us. It's a button, a button to summon the lift. You can press it if you like. And look, coming down from the air is an enormous elevator. It looks like it's made of the clouds itself. Come on, Gina and Dina. Let's all hop inside. Anything to get out this blooming soft sand. Um, nice to meet you, Mr. Sandman, and sorry again. Goodbye, young people and the lift doors close behind us all and we're heading upward leaving behind the great sand city and rising above it rising up to the sky until we're here and as we step out of the elevator right under our feet the ground is made up of rippling white clouds rolling like fields of the softest cotton wool or the fluffiest marshmallow. As far as the eye can see, the clouds are being grown in vast, neat rows. And here comes one of the cloud farmers with his straw hat and his Wellington boots. Hello, you lot. I'm Farmer Jones, and what be you doing here? Oh, hello, Farmer Jones. My friends here, Gina and Dina, are very hard-working diggers, and we thought perhaps they could help you move the clouds. Well, we usually use a giant to help us roll up the clouds when they're ready to go, but he's not been working much recently so we could use the help. How much can you carry in your buckets there? Well, we've both got a two cubic metre capacity, says Dina proudly. 
Well, actually, mine's more like a 2.1 cubic metre capacity. Nobody cares about your slightly bigger buckets, Gina. Well, that sounds pretty big. So the twins can carry four cubic metres altogether. And how many cubic metres in a cloud? I'd say around a thousand cubic metres, says Farmer Jones. Now I've got to make it fair. I can only pay you per cloud that you move. Oh dearie me. We're too big and clumsy for the Sun City. And now we're too small and delicate for the cloud farm. You might be right there, my girl. I think the clouds are a bit big and I should hate to overwork you. But now the lift has gone back down. How will we get back to the counting ship? If you want to go all the way to the end of this cloud field, you'll find the joint that's supposed to be working. His name's Iggledy, and he's a bit miserable at the moment, but he'll take you home in his pocket, I expect. Well, thank you anyway, Farmer Jones. Goodbye. Let's take a walk down this field. Rolling hills of unspoilt white clouds. And we can even take off our shoes and our socks. And what does it feel like to have that soft, cool cloud between our toes? But wait, what's that? It's an enormous man sobbing into a handkerchief the size of a tablecloth. Why, it must be Higgledy the giant. But why is he crying? Oh, you poor love. There, there, darling, what's the matter? Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> I didn't spot you lot coming. I'm just a bit sad, that's all. But why? Well, it's, it's just that I could make myself a fork. And I can make myself a knife. But I haven't got... I haven't got... I haven't got a spoon. You haven't got a spoon? But how do you eat your soup? Do be so insensitive, Gina. I just drink it straight out of the bowl. I don't mind if it's just me, but I've got a date tonight. How am I supposed to impress the beautiful Belinda Bigglebones when I can't even eat a bit of custard without getting it all over me face? Ooh. Belinda Bigglebones? Who's that? Belinda Bigglebones is only the most beautiful, the most sophisticated giantess that ever graced the planet of Earth. But I just know Hugh Jed and Face is going to steal her from me. If Belinda really likes you, I'm sure nobody could steal her away. Oh, you don't know Hugh. All the Jed and Faces are exactly the same. They've got bags of money. They paid us steelworks to make them some spoons. Where am I going to get that sort of money? Well, couldn't you try making one? I did try making one. I made a spoon out of a skip and a lamp post. But what would she think? Belinda Bigglebone sipping her soup out of a skip. No, 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 I'll just have to cancel. No, I suppose that wouldn't do. Not out of a skip. Hang on, I am getting an idea. Ooh, ooh, I am too, I am too. And Gina and Dina lower their arms and scoop up a large bucket of cloud. And now Gina lifts the arm, wheels over to the giant and tips her bucket into Higgledy's mouth. Thanks, I needed that, says the giant as he chews his mouth full of cloud. I love a bit of cloud. Tastes like marshmallows. <laughs> And now Dina wheels over and lifts her bucket of cloud to Higgledy's lips. And he opens his mouth and he chews it up again. 
Don't you see what we're doing? Says Gina. We're like your very own spoon, says Dina. Yeah, but better, because you'd have to lift a spoon for yourself. But we can bring our buckets to you, says Gina. Well, says the giant, it's like having a spoon that already knows where your mouth is. Exactly, exactly. Oh, but how can I ask you to come and stay with me? I expect you've got places to be, a pair of diggers like you. will be too busy to come and be spoons for me and Belinda. But you see, Higgledy, that's exactly why we came. Gina and Dina are looking for work. Yep, that's right. You mean you would stay here and be our spoons? We'd love to. Living on a cloud is going to be like being in heaven. Oh, Belinda's going to be so impressed with me. Imagine her face when she sees I've got spoons that know where your mouth is. That huge Jedden face doesn't stand a chance. Oh, you've made me the happiest giant in the whole world. I'm glad to hear it, Higgledy. It sounds like a perfect solution for everyone. But my friend and I should be getting home. Back to the counting ship. How about a ride home in my top pocket? says Higgledy the giant. And he bends down and takes a large pinch of cloud between his enormous fingers and puts it in his top pocket. That'll make you nice and comfy, he says, before scooping us up in his enormous hands and putting us inside the cloud-lined pocket. So let's wave goodbye to Gina and Dina. Goodbye, you two, and congratulations on your new job. Goodbye, and thank you very much for all your help. We are so happy. I'm sure you'll make a wonderful pair of spoons for the giants. And Higgledy starts to march across the field. And although we're jostled and bustled to and fro, that fluffy cloud keeps us safe and comfortable, and our heads are peeping up out of the top of the pocket as we walk for miles and miles across the clouds, and eventually we see a large, white, rocky cone poking up through the field of cloud. Why, it's the tip of a mountain, and Higgledy grabs it with both of his strong hands and begins to climb down. And we pass down through the cloud field and out into the air beneath. And eventually we see the snowy cap of the mountain give way to warmer climates. And Higgledy no longer has to climb. He's taking long strides now, as tall as the trees and up here, in his pocket, we're level with the birds and we can see them flying home to their nests and we can smell the pines as he steps over the river just as if he was stepping over a puddle and you can snuggle down into his top pocket and just as if it were a sleeping bag and it's cool and comfortable up amid the canopy, resting against a cloud in a giant's top pocket. We certainly end up in some strange places on our journeys together, but that's just what makes it so much fun to have adventures on the counting ship. I hope you'll join me next time.